All right, what's up everybody? Welcome back to the channel. Uh, today we're gonna do another episode of the Mark One VR6 build that I'm currently going through. Uh, I'd like to go over some of the stuff on the engine, show the mounts, uh, the manual clutch conversion, stuff like that. Go over some of that stuff in detail. Uh, maybe cover some stuff in the engine bay as well. We're getting super close to actually putting the engine in the car. So there, I have like two or three things I still need to iron out and then we should be able to do that. So I doubt we're gonna do that in this episode. Maybe we'll get to that. We'll see how much time we have. But I'd like to cover as much as I can and still get, bring some value. I didn't get to film a lot of the stuff that I did on the engine itself. Um, just really busy and, you know, I was in Alaska for 10 days and, and came back and, and have just been hammering out work and stuff like that. So I've been uh, trying to do little bits here and there and it's kind of hard to, you know, film everything and do all that stuff. So anyways, I'll cover most of that stuff and then cover some of the engine bay. And then we'll go through some more of the stuff. Maybe we'll put it in today. I doubt it, but that'll be in the next episode, if not. So appreciate you watching. Um, yeah, stay tuned. So let's roll into the engine right now. Alrighty, so the first mount we'll cover and kind of the most challenging one that I had just because of the amount of work I had to put in to get it to work was this front mount. This is the one that fits in the cup that, you know, if you're familiar with Mark 1s, there's a front cup. It's kind of right near the radiator. Um, that's what, where this one fits in. Um, the top mount was fine. It uses the OEM starter bolt. It has a nut on the back washer. That one's that one's totally kosher. The, the bottom one, however, was a, a big deal. So I think there was an issue with this gearbox or something at some point um, where hardware broke off inside there or it was drilled out or something was going on. I, I'm, I'm not a VR6 guru, so I don't really know the entire thing here, but um, I was able to make this mount work by using the original hardware I had from the OG mount from the, when it was in the Passat. I just had to drill this out and that kind of sucked ass because I really wasn't prepared to drill this out. So I didn't really have the press going or any of that stuff. So I ended up making it work and I got it a, a super snug fit because you, you don't want any sort of lateral play here um, at all because then it's like having a loose mount and then it can lead to vibration issues and, and other issues that you don't want to have. So I really had to make it like true fit, like exact to the bolt that I was using here. And it worked out really great. There's no play at all. There's not gonna be any extra stress involved, which is really nice. And I got it to work. So that was the first bolt issue and, and first mount issue that I had, but we got it sorted and it was of no fault of your wise's kit. It was just the way this was set up and whatnot. It just made me run into issues. So, all right, let's move on to some other stuff. All right, so the next mount and the uh, next part that I installed that we'll move into, into and kind of talk about here is gonna be the uh, manual clutch conversion kit and then the uh, trans mount itself. So this works out really well. It's kind of a pretty trick system um, right here. So this, for the uh, manual clutch conversion, it uses this plate right here. That's, it, like I said, it's pretty trick. Um, your clutch cable goes through here and, and hooks up to the clutch um, using like pretty much a, a Mark One, you know, clutch adapter or whatever you want to call it. But um, here itself, there's threads on this side, this side you use a nut, but it's recessed. So it, it fits really seamless. So you don't have any impact on the cable, which is really nice. Um, so that was a, like, not really difficult to figure out, but as soon as you get the orientation of where the, you know, it has to hold the cable and whatnot, and then you screw that in, um, you're pretty much good to roll. So uh, that worked out really well. This is the mount. Um, I can also talk about this a little bit. Uh, on Eurowise's website, they, they make a note, like if you want your engine to hang lower um, or higher, you either rotate this to the bottom or rotate it to the top. I, I don't remember which is which, but I believe um, this is gonna hold it higher. If you put it up here, it's gonna hold it lower. So uh, I have it set up for the higher because I want a lot of clearance first, um, just because A, my car is super low and B, um, I can take, it's a lot easier to take the hood off than to be stranded on the side of the road and uh, not have any oil for the first test drive. Um, but I don't think I'm going to run into that. I don't think this sits high enough that it's going to give me an issue. It's very similar to the 16 valve that was in it. So we'll go from there. But uh, yeah, this one pretty seamless. I did run into an issue in here as well. I had to go ahead and cut new threads into the, into the bell housing itself. Um, that kind of sucked as well, but I got it to work and everything's everything's good there. So it uh, worked out nice. Um, next, we'll move into the uh, diff mount and then the uh, engine mount itself too. So uh, we'll cover that and then we'll talk about some stuff in the car. Alrighty, I figure I'll just get both right in the same shot so that'll work out well for us. Um, 
Very simple stuff down here too. Uh, so for the diff mount, this is gonna sit in the back towards the firewall um, using the factory uh, mount that was or originally in the car. Um, the engine mount here is gonna bolt in the same orientation that's shown right there as it is. There may be a small contact with the bushing to the block. This is normal as stated on your Waz's website. Um, so no difficulties there. That one in really easy. That all fit up nice. This, uh, for the diff mount, um, I recommend following the guide because it there's some other holes that look like they would work, but they don't. So you want to make sure you have it in the right ones. You don't want to stress out the casing at all because if you do that, it's going to break. Then you're going to need a new case and that's really going to suck. Um, so you definitely don't want to do that. So it, it has two metal two metal mounts. It's got a rubber bushing in between and then that hard mounts directly to the uh, to the brace that's in the car already. So that's it for the mounts uh, and the cable clutch conversion kit. Um, there's going to be some throttle body stuff that I have to do as well once the actual engine's in the car and we're getting closer to our first start. But as far as that goes, that was pretty much it. I didn't run into any other issues other than um, correct bolt and hardware usage. I had everything kind of organized um, the way it should be, but um, when things happen and you move things around, it ends up dumping buckets and, and all sorts of stuff. So you got to go on a, a bolt hunt. Luckily, I found a local guy, really cool dude. He pretty much just like parts out and fixes and, and builds VR6s. So I was able to get some good hardware for him. And he's been a huge help that way. So, uh, yeah, thanks for that. And, uh, yeah, now I'll move into some in-car stuff, the shift box mounting stuff. And then uh, that'll probably do it for this video. Uh, unless I'm feeling saucy, then we'll throw it in. All right, covering the shift box and getting it actually mounted in the car. Um, here's mine. It's using the O2A shift bracket adapter that's sold by Eurowise. Um, it uses the factory hardware. You see these three little bolts on the outside. It easy, uses that to, to mount the bracket down. Then you bring the shift box up from the bottom. You have to clear out the heat shield if you still have that, um, which I still did, but I, I cleared that out of the way. Put this up in, and then I had to source the two big bolts uh, in order to make this work. The factory hardware was just too small. I don't know if it's a combination of the, the leftover um, uh, foam um, that was on the outside of the shift box when I pushed it up or maybe my body's just a little thicker. I'm, I'm not really sure, but it didn't work out. So I sourced those and, um, they work fine and it's pulled up and it's really nice and tight. Now I have no clearance issues, which is nice. I was a little nervous that I was going to have some, but, uh, yeah, it works out great. So here's the engine bay, uh, just real minor stuff to go over in here. Not too much has changed. Um, I did find a little bit of rust right there where the lower control arms mount to the actual body. Um, it was just surface rust, so I took care of it immediately because obviously that's a pretty structural part of the car, and I don't want one of those breaking or bending while I'm, you know, hauling ass. So uh, that worked out well. I did put a new master cylinder in. I'm not sure if I mentioned that in any of the earlier videos because I was pissing out a bunch of fluid, and that's probably explaining why my uh, foot or my pedal was so spongy. Um, as far as that, I still have this wiring mess that I'm going to have to take care of, but I'm hoping that the, that doesn't interfere at all with me getting the actual engine in the car. So we'll go through that and uh, fix all that stuff uh, after we have everything mounted up and, and ran, and hopefully we don't run into any issues. There, there's not many electrical stuff or uh, electrical connectors needed on the backside of the engine, which is really nice. I think there's a knock sensor, and that's pretty much about it. Um, the last things I'm going to have to do in here to have any sort of fitment issue or, or fix any fitment issue is just taking off the, the brackets that are on the uh, manual rack because that's part of the uh, integral, you know, system that you need to be able to fit your exhaust and your shift linkages through. Um, but other than that, just that's pretty much all I got to do. So uh, we'll try and get that stuff done and uh, put the engine in the car. Alrighty, everyone, that's going to be it for this video. Kind of a short and sweet one, but uh, hopefully it brought some value. Kind of gives anybody, you know, doing this a little bit of clarity on the mounts and, and the manual clutch conversion. I'm going to go ahead and, and cut off uh, those brackets on that rack, clear that stuff, and then I'm going to get ready to start, you know, figuring out how I'm getting this engine in. Um, I did get an engine leveler, so we should be good there. And then I'll try my best to try and get everything in that one piece. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. It's nothing really exciting, so I'm not going to film it, but uh, I'll show it when it's done on my next video, and uh, then we'll go from there. So, yep, hope you liked the little update. 
hope that brought a little bit of value to you. Um, yeah, like, subscribe, do all that stuff if you want. I appreciate it a lot. And uh, yeah, love doing this. So thanks so much for watching. We'll see you in the next one.